close enough? It'll work. I'll have to find out if I can hem the end of a ridge cap or not. That's why we're starting on this side, so if you mess it up, no yeah. one will know. This is also known as the ashamed side of the house. Oh yeah. Or the north side. On the plans it says north, because nobody wants their plans to say the looky loose side and the ashamed side. <laughs> Should I leave you now? Yep, thanks for the help. Okie doke. You know how to reach me. I do. So we're down to basically the north and the south sides of the ridge cap. I wanted to make sure I had enough time to do this right. Obviously it got dark the other night, um, so we weren't able to finish safely. And it's a good thing. Because here I am standing here looking at this ridge cap thinking, um, I probably better put a little more sealant on that. It looks pretty dang good overall. So the primary objectives today is to get this fastened um, where it needs to be, which we couldn't do from over there. You just can't reach. And then we've got to hem this and get this all tidy. Weather tight, sealed up, and also hopefully looking really good. As Alyssa mentioned, I'm doing the north side first <laughs> in case I make a complete cluster monkey of this side. It's not straightforward what to do here because of this small dog, dog leg in the, the ridge cap. If it were just a piece of metal like this, I could simply cut in the middle, hem it down, hem it down and be done. Any of you who are super good at Christmas present wrapping know exactly what I'm talking about. These things are fun, they're challenging, and the metal obviously has personality. Something I did learn from doing the cladding is that I have the ability to hem anywhere that I cut, uh, producing a nice finished cut or a nice finished piece. If I just leave that a cut piece of metal, first of all, it's going to show. And second of all, I think it would be more conducive to um, corrosion, although that's probably nominal in the long run. But this produces a nice finished look. So hopefully when we get done with this thing, it's going to look good and be functional. And then I've got to get on my trusty ridge steed and work my way across and finish riveting uh, each of the ribs to the ridge cap to make sure it's secure. If that all goes well, we're going to the south side. Not gonna lie, it's pretty stinking cool to come up here and you can feel the heat pumping out of the ridge cap here. Of course, we're gonna seal this up. And of course, that's why we're using this vent material. This vent, vent material obviously is dual purpose. One, it's a critter preventer. If we get this nice and tight, nothing's gonna nest in here. And it also has this kind of Brillo material that allows air to escape. The sizing on the intake and the outlet here was all planned. When we bought the drip edge, we measured or got the information from the manufacturer on the amount of net free area, the square feetage of net free area per linear foot. We calculated, calculated that based on the amount of eave that we had, and we calculated it based on the amount of ridge that we have, and that gave us the total net free area at the top and at the bottom. And there's a lot of information out there. We're not experts, don't take our advice, but you can do some research if you're really curious about cold roof design. Search for building sciences. There's a, a gentleman named Joe who's, you know, really dry, but funny, but smart. And he talks a lot about the science, not just behind ventilation, but balancing the vents so you don't get an undesirable flow characteristic, stuff like that. Um, we feel pretty good that the flow on this is balanced because the intake and the air gap and the uh, outlet are all basically the same. 
creating a nice flow chamber. And if you haven't already seen this, we've done an entire video series on this roof, which has pretty much taken us all summer. And it's, it's way extensive. It is way involved. From one shot here, maybe the camera can see this, but what you're looking at here is basically our SIP roof. This is actually an, an extension, but it's an extension of the SIPs. And then inside here is a, is a three quarter inch or a one by uh, furring strip. And then on top of that, we've installed five eighths plywood. And then our waterproof membrane, which is ice and water shield. And finally the metal roofing and then a vented ridge cap. And this vent here is critical for the performance of the roof. A lot of people on social media have said, oh, you're gonna regret not Tyveking or tar papering your sips. And that would be counterproductive. That would be like painting them because the whole goal here is to allow the sips to breathe. Because sips, if you haven't already done your research on sips, do some research. They're a very exotic building material. And from what we understand, and that's the plan, is if they work correctly, this home will be extremely comfortable, very efficient, and easy to make comfortable to condition energy-wise. Uh, the problem is they've got a kryptonite, and that is moisture. Of course, most houses have the same problem, but SIPs are particularly vulnerable because they are made out of OSB, which just doesn't do well with long-term exposure to moisture. So this cold roof is the response to early SIP failures near the ridge where any moisture that basically moved from the inside of the house during the heating season to the outside of the roof and then either condensated or something condensed, condensated, condensed on the underside of the roofing or something and just was unable to escape. It couldn't, even in the heat or in the, in the summertime, no way to get out and the result was what they call a ridge rot. Some people don't go this far. They just put a vented ridge on there and they rely on osmosis. I don't even know what it's called. The migration of moisture, you know, from the roof to the ridge. It will happen. In this case, this roof is so expensive and it is so integral or integral to the structure, not structurally, but it's the roof. Like you can't just fix it. So in that case, we decided to, to do the best thing, which is to give ourselves a good insurance plan. Here we are, this is the culmination of all that work, having this ventilation system. And when you stand up here and you can feel the air pumping out the ridge, it's just cool. I'm pretty sure these bugs feel like it's an invite. Let's see if this guy turns the corner. Yep, look at that. Thank you. I think I'll just move into your house now. I think they know, they sense that there's an opening up here and they're like, oh, I think they want us to move in. In fact, here comes one now. Out you go. <laughs> and they do not like to be evicted, that's for sure. All right, I think I have a plan for this. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut this ear off and then we're going to hem the dog leg around onto this leg and then we're gonna sever the top of the ridge back and then we're gonna bend one leg down and then the other leg down. Well, that's not a very good plan because the uh, step rake is, is right here. We don't need that much to cover. So we may have to, well, and this is part of my, I, I just basically gave myself a big fat chunk at the end because I didn't know, I didn't know how much this was. And I guess if I'd have known that, that's how much I would have probably left hanging over the edge of the roof. Let's just work through it and see how it turns out.
Well, I'm not gonna win any sheet metal bending awards, that's for sure. But I think with sealant here, 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 in the corners, and then up this little piece here, that'll work. I think in an ideal world, you wouldn't have this seam. This ridge cap would just come out and terminate, but it's not where we are. So I think for all the circumstances, that's pretty dang good. And if I can somewhat replicate that on the south side, that'd be great. I did learn here that I can actually use my one inch hemming tool. I can measure the distance from here to this um, little hem and I can, I can hem this guy right to that hem. So we'll see how that looks on the south side. It seems like there was more of a gap here. I can't remember, but we'll, we'll just do the best we can with that. Overall, I'm satisfied. Now, if I can just survive the ridge sled. I'll trade you. Oh, what happened? This one went off the roof. Oh no. Is it broken? I don't know, but it's not worth the risk. Right. You got the card right oh, here. Yeah, the card. Okay. And the battery. Let's put that one through testing. Yeah. See if it's still alive or not. That one may be going to the camera hospital. Maybe. That's probably the highest anything's fallen. That's pretty good. The SIPS was pretty high too. So it's that kinda like your iPhone. It makes survive some monumental fall and then it like yeah. falls off the table and it breaks. My iPhone almost fell too, but that one made it. All right, we're back in business. Next time you come down, the roof will be complete. As soon as this side is done, the roof is done. So I think, put my head down, try to knock this out. Sounds like there's a chance that tonight we're getting pizza. That's motivation to get this done. I mean, you know, having a dried roof, that's important too, but pizza guys, pizza. Send Alyssa a text message. What do you want to say? Hey love, I'm ready to come down. The roof is donezo. Ready to send it? Yep. I'll send it. You're ready to come down as in you're done? Yeah. Is the roof done? Yeah. Wow. Let it rain, suckers. Let it rain. Let me take you down, then we can celebrate. Last time, last time.
Yay! Hey. You should be happier than you were. Man! What a freaking roof! Right? Guess what? I don't know. We win! <sighs> roof got Take nothing! That. that sucked. Yeah, that was terrible. You know what? Mm. In one of our posts on Facebook, I said that we didn't realize it, but the roof was going to define our entire summer. Yeah. It's done, and guess what? Fall is tomorrow. Manana? No. So it truly dizzle. was our entire summer, and we finished Legit. just in the nick of time. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that sucked. I don't want to do that again anytime soon, okay? No, I feel like the roof was almost as hard as like the footings and the ICFs and the warm board, you it know? It took us it's like, longer than the entire foundation and platform. I don't know how it was watching it, but doing it, it was so unsatisfying the entire time because you go across the roof once, you know, which is maybe the equivalent of doing all the footings and pouring the footings, but the difference is that like, it doesn't look like you did anything. Nope. So we did all that work. Yeah. Just to have metal roofing on a roof. But you guys know, you diehards, that there's so much that's gone into this roof the past month, and that is why we're happy to be done. So we were talking last night about this roof, and we assume that many people who follow us have never built such a thing. And there's no way to explain to you what it was like other than to use an analogy. And the best analogy we came up with is that it's got to be like, because we've never done it, climbing Mount Everest. The last, like, first of all, you don't just go climb Mount Everest. It takes many days and many weeks, I believe. Months. It takes training. months of training and stuff. And basically, you go from base camp to base camp to base camp to base camp, and slowly over time, you climb Mount Everest. Nobody just gets up and climbs a mountain. And this house has been that way, and the irony is the ridge cap was actually very easy. Mm -hmm. But getting to it, really, really hard. And that alone would have been enough if we were fresh, rested, all ready to go. But we are exhausted from working all summer in a forklift up high, hot. Like, so that last little hike, like if you could just hike from the last base camp to the top of Everest, fresh, all hydrated and well nourished and stuff, it's probably not that hard. Like it's hard, but it's not that hard. But if you've been hiking for two months already, you're starving, you're dehydrated, you have no oxygen, you look like crap. That last little leg of Everest has gotta be one of the most satisfying hikes there is. That is the ridge cap, but we win. We should put a little sign up there that says like, dun, 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 summited. Yeah, really excited to be back on level Solid ground. ground. That's it. And tomorrow we're throwing a bit of a celebration. I think we've had this long enough to give it a nickname. I think it, we should call it Loli. I think Loli is going home tomorrow to wherever home is. Probably to some other poor sucker who's building a house. Yeah. Ha! But thank you, Loli. You're getting a you're getting a going away party tomorrow, okay? So before we celebrate, we're not meeting with our friends till sometime after five. It's about 2.33 now, which means there's still time. So I think Jesse already mentioned this, but the last thing we, and by we, Jesse, are going to do is foam the connection between the end of the panels, our wall panels, and the roof. If you remember, we held our wall panels off about a full inch just in case they grew or something. It's very easy to just foam that last little bit and that ensures a really good airtight connection, I guess. Annoying. What a mess. Gap's too tight. That sucks. Can't get anything in there. 
Nice. Stuff sticks to everything but what you want it to. Sign me up. Only shoots in one position. Makes a huge mess. Fun. Doesn't stop when you let go of the trigger. Won't even stick to that, it'll just fall out. Wow. Awesome. How to make a massive mess. This is exactly how to do it. Well, foaming was, uh, I don't know if it was a big fat fail, more like a big fat annoyance. So I think the conclusion is forklift is going back tomorrow and foaming is gonna be another project and sounds like we're gonna need to find a better foaming solution, you know, trying to get up under the eave in really tight spaces. I have nothing good to say about foam. I wear it. This stuff is amazing at sticking to me. Doesn't go where you want it to do. It comes out fast, comes out slow. Doesn't stick to the freaking house. Falls out of the house like nobody's business. Right here, expands like nuts. Right there, doesn't expand. Expands like nuts, doesn't expand. Like, I'm, I've had enough. Like, I'm covered in foam. Man bass is covered in foam. House is covered in foam. And a little bit of it even got in the cracks to help air seal the house. So we, we've got to do something. Enough, I'm done. Sick of this project. Well, I wish we could end this video on a more positive note. I think in the end, we're obviously extremely happy that the roof is done so. At least until we do our plumbing venting, so that might be the last time we're up on the roof, but this is a really big milestone for us, but I think with the roof in particular, in a way, all we see, like we have so many more problems to take care of before winter. So I think at this point, you know, we need a tiny bit of a break. I think we're actually taking, talking about taking a break. I don't know if it's gonna happen this week. Yes, we have a lot to do, but we've just been pushing so hard that I don't know that our productivity is as high as it could be. So at a certain point, you're gonna be better off taking a little bit of time off so that you can tackle some of these problems fresh. You're actually gonna be further ahead than if you keep on grinding. So stay tuned. I think this kind of wraps up our summer and after we just take a little bit of time, we're gonna kind of re-strategize and figure out what we need to do to begin the next push, which is the push to be ready for winter. Thanks for hanging with us on this project, guys. It's been a really long summer. Look what I found today. Our first potatoes popping out of the dirt. This is the stuff that we never ended up putting more soil on top of, so I might do that tomorrow, but look at that guy. Pretty sure that's a purple potato right there. It's so purple, it's almost black. Guys, the day has come. The forklift is going home. We have had this thing for three months. We never saw that coming. And there are certainly a million ways to do what we did with the forklift, but we've learned a lot. And we feel like if there's a trophy, it's that we got all this work done safely and no one got hurt. That said, in hindsight, we probably should have tried to buy a forklift. In fact, it's not out of the question because we still have a tremendous amount of work to do. But we're hoping to celebrate the help that this forklift gave us because this leg of the house build was hands down the hardest. If you told me that I would spend the vast majority of my summer in a man basket, I'm not sure what I would have said but I'm pretty sure I would have been in denial. But there's no denying that this house is starting to look amazing. And I can't tell you how wonderful it is when it starts pounding rain and the roof is just doing its job. It's so comfortable inside and we haven't even foamed around the windows and doors or the walls yet. But that right there is what we've been trying to achieve 
for a year. Bugaboo, did you get in the boom on the forklift? Huh? Did you get to be besties with Loli? Do you want to say goodbye? Do you want to be a part of the going away party? What are you doing in there? <laughs> are you saying your goodbyes too? I know, it's been around here for so long that you probably think it belongs to us, huh? Oh yeah, I've seen these kitty prints many mornings when I come out to start work on the house. But Bugaboo, aren't you happy that the house is dry? And now, come winter, we can stay in there? I know, right? And you did your part this summer by being a cat. By catting. Say your goodbyes, okay? It's gonna go bye-bye soon. Okay? Bugaboo, they're here. They're here. What do you have to say? Huh? Okay, gotta get out of the seat. Come on. Come on. Bye, Loli. Have fun wherever you're going. We might see you again soon.